Hello YouTube, Magnitude Gaming here with our next episode covering the history of competitive play in Yu-Gi-Oh! We had 200 subscribers after our previous episode, so go check out that previous episode and thanks again for all the support guys. HSC Atlanta was the first event to be played under the October 2005 ban list. The ban list had slaughtered the Chaos Thousand Knights Restrict deck. With Go Control behind us, a new format had begun. As I mentioned in my previous video, I felt that the release of Cyber Dragon in particular was a paradigm shift in Yu-Gi-Oh! It was a big monster that could be summoned almost for free. The Trinity cards, Black Cluster Soldier on way the beginning, Sinister Serpent, Trap Infecting Virus, Mirror Force, and Ring of Destruction were all banned now. Magician of Faith, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Night Assailant, Tsukuyomi, Metamorphosis, and Scapegoat were all just some of the cards that were limited that had hurt the deck. Hundreds of duels showed up for SCC Atlanta, but when the dust settled, only eight were left. Team Scoop had officially entered the tournament scene at SJC Boston, but they weren't stopping there. These guys were back. Paul Everton was back in top 8 and was piloting a Chaos Control Warrior deck. It featured cards like DD Warrior Lady, DD Assailant, DD Survivor, Mobius the Frost Monarch, Zomber the Dark, Mystic Swordsman Level 2, and Exiled Force. The deck was also playing two Smashing Ground and Reinforcement of the Armies. The deck also mained traps like Sakura 2 Armor, Trap Hole, and Bottomless Trap Hole. His teammate Quincy Gordon was also piloting a similar deck, although he was teching Rush recklessly and a Dust Tornado. He also opted to main 2 Spear Reaper. Unaffiliated Mike Silvino was also playing a Chaos Warrior deck. He was teching Legendary Jiu Jitsu Master, Big Shield Gardener, Tooth Estalus, the Firestorm Monarch, and was main decking 2 Soul Exchanges. Then there was Jason Holloway. This was his first top of many in the Shonen Jump circuit. He would go on to place in various events, although he is rather known for his infamy, hearing the nickname Jason Stalloway due to his reputation of stalling and then setting in burn cards to win in time. Jason was playing for Team Out Phase. I was playing a Chaos Warrior deck with two Cyber Dragon, Chaos Sorcerer, Goblin Elite Attack Force, and three Sakura 2 Armors. Oh, and he was taking a Wave Motion Cannon in his side deck. Yeah. John Jensen from Team Nexus had his first top since losing in the finals of SGC Orlando earlier in the year. Also tacked with Chaos Warriors, he main decked two Air Knight Parashas, two Spear Reaper, Magical Merchant, Ceasefire, and two Sakura 2 Armors. He was also side decking Mobius the Frost Monarch in his side deck. Ryan Serra also made the top eight with the Chaos Warrior deck. His deck was attacking widespread ruins. Daniel Fitzgerald from Southern Florida was focusing his deck a little more on Sacred Phoenix of the Nethys. He was also playing that along with Hand of the Nethys, Apprentice Magician, Blade Knight, and attacked Wave Motion Cannon in Royal Decree. He was also playing the standard Warrior lineup like the others. He also side decked two Karibos and Chiron the Mage. Marcel Bode was probably playing the most unique deck of the eight duelists. While he was indeed playing the standard Warrior engine, he opted to play Xerion Universe and also main decked Steamroid in three Smashing Grounds. He was also side decking Spell Cancel and Ceasefire. In top 8, Jason Holloway fell to John Jensen after Jensen destroyed his only monster with Sakura 2 armor and John summoned Don Zalug to attack for game. Ryan Serra was able to take out Mike Sardino to set up a semifinals match with John Jensen. Both members of Team Scoop fell as Paul Levinson would lose to Daniel Fitzgerald as Marcio Bode took down Quincy Gordon. Ryan Serra would lose to John Jensen in top 4 and Jensen was back in the finals. Daniel Fitzgerald attacked with all his monsters and launched his wave motion cannon for 4,000 damage to finish off Marcio Bode. The finals was between two Floridians, much like SJC Orlando. John Jensen and Daniel Fitzgerald were set to play it out for the title of the champion in Shonen Jump Atlanta. Game 1. Daniel set one monster and one spell trap. Jensen set Spear Reaper and passed. Daniel set another monster and then flipped Morphing Jar. John drew and looked over at his new hand. On his turn, he summoned Don Zalug. Attack Morphing Jar and discarded Brain Control from Daniel's hand. He then activated Confiscation and saw Dan's hand of Mystic Tomato, Smashing Ground, and Bottomless Trap Bull. He discarded Mystic Tomato. Jean then used Omen of Crosses to remove Magical Merchant from play, and then removed his own Magical Merchant from the deck, set a spell or trap, and then ended. Daniel activated Scapegoats in the end phase, and Daniel decided to use Premature Barrier to Max Sacred Phoenix with the Net This and attack Jean's face on Monster, Spear Reaper. He set another spell or trap and ended. Jean put Don's to defense mode and ended. Daniel drew, checked his set, and attacked Zalug with Phoenix. He then used Smashing Ground on Spear Reaper. John activated Reinforcement of the Army and brought out DD Warrior Lady. He set one monster and one spell trap and ended. Daniel activated his own Confiscation, revealing Swords of Revealing Light, DD Assailant, and Enemy Control. You have to discard the Enemy Control. The next few turns were mostly just setting and passing as no player wanted to commit to the other. Daniel activated Mystical Space Typhoon on Jensen's set card, which he chained to be Scapegoat. John put out tokens, and now both players had four tokens on each of their sides of the field. John drew and activated Heavy Storm to destroy Daniel's set spell or trap cards. He then flipped DD Warlady and attacked one of the sheep tokens. 
Daniel drew, summoned Didi assailant, and ended. John drew and attacked another sheep token. Daniel drew and attacked John's Didi world lady with his Didi assailant. John set a monster, and then looked through both graveyards before activating Swords of Revealing Light, flipping up Daniel's set Spear Reaper. Daniel drew and ended his turn. John flipped summoned Didi assailant and attacked the final sheep token. Daniel drew and used Dust Tornado on Swords of Revealing Light. He then used his Didi assailant to attack the other Didi assailant and remove both from the game. John special summoned Chaos Sorcerer and ended. Daniel set one monster and then John attacked it on the next turn, revealing to be Hand of the Net this. Daniel set one spell or trap, only to have it destroyed by John's end phase Dust Tornado. Daniel chained Roll Decree, but then John chained Call the Haunted to bring back Mystic Swordsman level 2. On his turn, he attacked Daniel's face down Sukuyomi with Swordsman, and then attacked directly with Chaos Sorcerer. Daniel drew and played Heavy Storm. Mystic Swordsman remained on the field since Call the Haunted had been negated by Roll Decree. Daniel summoned Didi World Lady and ended his turn. John drew and on his turn revealed Snatch Seal in his hand. Daniel knew the game was over as he had no way to protect himself from the onslaught of monsters. Both players opened their side decks, and now game 2 was about to begin. Dan went first and activated Wave Motion Cannon, and then set a monster. John drew, set a monster, and two spell or traps and ended. Daniel drew and set another monster and another spell or trap. John did the same, and set another monster. Daniel summoned Didi World Lady, and John activated Seize Fire. Daniel then attacked into John's face down Didi Assailant. John drew and passed, then activated Dust Tornado on Daniel's Wave Motion Cannon in the standby phase. Daniel used Brain Control to take over John's DD Assailant, and then sacrificed it for Jinzo to attack directly, although John stopped the attack with Scapegoats. Two tokens went down. John drew and then used his own Brain Control to take Jinzo, and then attacked right into the DD Assailant, as both monsters were removed. He then sent one Spell or Trap and ended. Daniel drew, walked out of set cards, and played, and played Reinforcement of the Army. He searched for DD Assailant, which he summoned, and turned Apprentice Magician to attack mode. He then attacked the last two Sheep tokens. John drew and set one Spell or Trap card, and then ended with his monster zone completely empty. Daniel attacked directly with Didi Assailant, but got hit by Sakurai 2 armor, although Daniel saved it with his Book of Moon. On his next turn, Daniel switched Apprentice Magician to Defense Mode and ended. John set a monster and ended. Daniel attacked it and discovered it was a Spear Reaper. Since he had no way to get rid of it, both players were once again just passing and drawing for turn. Daniel drew and set a card and ended. John drew and ended. Looked at the field and graveyard before offering what he could do. John activated Call of the Haunted to bring back Exiled Force and tributed to destroy the Apprentice Magician. He then tributed Spear Reaper for Inner Parish Shot that he had been holding for several turns, and attacked the face down to reveal to be a Sangan. Daniel searched out for Exile Force, now only at 2600 life points. He set another spell or trap and ended. Daniel summoned Exile Force, and used it to destroy a Knight Parish Shot, and then attacked directly with TD Assailant. He set two more spell or traps and ended. John drew, and with one set spell or trap and no monsters, he summoned Tsukuyomi, flipping Daniel's TD Assailant face down. He then removed it with no mana process and attacked directly. He then set another spell or trap. Daniel drew and set another spell or trap and activated Swords of Revealing Light. John drew, set another monster and another spell or trap and ended. Daniel drew, set another spell or trap and ended. John drew and ended, waiting for swords to run down. Daniel drew, checked his set cards and used Mystical Space Tailwind to destroy John's torrential tribute. He then activated Premature Barrow to bring back Exiled Force and traded it to destroy the Facetime Tsukuyomi. He then summoned Don Zook and attacked directly, discarding Dark Hole from John's hand. John drew, set another monster and ended. Daniel drew and put Don Zulu to defense, then set another monster, and also passed for his turn. John decided to summon Chaos Sorcerer, but it was removed by Bottomless Trap Pole. He then used Premature Breath to make Exile Force, and then treated to destroy the FaceTime monster. He then summoned Didi World Lady and attacked directly, only to run into Scapegoat. John then used Confiscation and discarded Daniel's own Dark Hole from his hand. Daniel drew, set one monster, and ended. John drew, and on his turn, treated the Didi World Lady for a Night Parasoth. With only 700 white points remaining, Daniel had no way to save himself. The Air Knight Parasoth attacked the Sheep Token, and that was game. John Jensen wins the match 2-0, and was now the champion of SJC Atlanta. He had avenged his loss from earlier in the year, and had given Team Nexus their second title. His Chaos Warrior deck would set a trend for the remainder of the format, with many people opting to write different variations of it, with only a few different texts here and there. John Jensen was a champion, and something tells me that this wouldn't be the last time that he would top, what a one win. That does it for this episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you join us for the next episode, SJC Chicago 2005. That's the T for Magnitude, guys. Thanks for watching.